hey friends, it's Tracy and Violet, who's behind you from Tea Time with Tracy and Violet. And I was just outside having a cup of tea with my friends over on my Nova Scotia Living channel. But I'm still going to have tea with you and talk about a book I finished yesterday. I showed them my teacup. I'll show you, show you in case you don't follow me over there. It's fine either way. But today is my mom's birthday. She's an angel. But I took a little trip to the lighthouse today because my mom loved the lighthouse and I can feel her spirit there. And what better day to have a teacup with the lighthouse on it than today. So, yeah, beautiful. You can see a ship there in the side. It looks kind of like the blue nose. And underneath it says Atlantic Canada coastal scene. And I swear to goodness, this is exactly where it looked like today except it was extremely foggy and you couldn't see the ocean there's gold on this side of our arm on the back side of our arm and right on our elbow too and look at the seagull and there's one on the inside yes here's her skirt or pedestal it has the same scene on it but there's gold all around the edges here beautiful this is Duchess Bone China, England. So, cheers, friends. I'm gonna have, I'm still using the same teapot I had the past couple videos. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna do a video today. But since I'm having a pot of tea, I'm having um, ginger and lemon tea right now. Um, I just wanted something a little different. And, yeah it's good and hot still but I finished a book yesterday and it's called hate me by a Jade Ashley Jade is her name Ashley Jade anyways yeah <laughs> this took me a couple days to read um, just because I haven't I'm a little under the weather but Anyways, ooh Nelly, this book. I don't know how I feel about this book, to be honest. I really don't. This is extremely dark. If you see my video, it was quite a, a while back. I did one, I was down in my spooky basement and talked about bully romances. One was untouchable and one was, what was the other one called? I can't even think of the name of it. I can see the cover. Anyways, if I think of it, I'll put it right here. And those were supposed to be dark, bully romances. And those are, but they don't got nothing on this one, honestly. I was looking for a standalone book just to switch it up. I really like series and duet books and big long series that, you know, you have 10 books in a series to read. I love that because it kind of continues with the story. But I wanted to switch it up and I've had this one for a while and didn't read it. And I picked it up and yeah, right out the gate, it's kind of bananas. I'll read the back of it. It's not a great big reading back here. It says, I'm the whispers in the dark you can't ignore, the bully you can't run away from. I'm a tormentor who makes your life a living hell, the villain you love to hate. I'm the vicious stepbrother sleeping in the next room, the one who knows all your secrets, and I'll stop at nothing to make you pay. Yeah. Yeah. So this book starts out with this girl, I think it's in grade, the 10th grade. And I'm not a big fan of high school stuff but this is certainly not even a young adult book this is an adult adult with what goes on in this book 10th grade um uh god aspen aspen is the girl so she starts at this new big preppy school fancy private school um wear uniforms kind of school in 10th grade and it's a new school. She doesn't generally go to schools like this because her family's living on the line 
And she never knows from one week to the next whether they're going to have food or not. And all of a sudden, she can go to this big fancy school. She goes to the school her very first day. And she's nervous, not only because it's a new school, but there was somebody from her childhood that was right around her age that would be going to this school. And she hasn't seen him in years. And she was kind of scared to see him because the last time they seen each other, he pushed her down and I don't know, she hurt herself quite bad. And, uh, and I'm thinking that was one thing like I liked and I didn't like this book. That was one thing. I'm just like, I'm thinking of myself. If I got in a fight with a little scrap with somebody when I'm, you know, six or seven, and then I'm in the 10th grade, I'm scared to go to school because of something that this little six or seven year old did to me when I was little, like that wouldn't affect me at all. I'll be like, but that's me. So she's nervous about seeing this fella and this fella name is Knox, Knox. So Aspen and Knox are the two people this book is about. So she strolls into the, <gasps> woo, her first gla class and he's there and it goes to hell in a handbasket it really does and this is like the first part of this book really kind of ticked me off because when it flips the script and you're inside of his head he has this extreme hatred for this girl and I'm just like what the heck why do you hate this girl you haven't seen her since she was six or seven and you hate this girl like you're gonna hate this girl right off the bat with every fiber of your being I was just like oh my goodness and he's talking to himself like he's gonna make her life a living hell and he absolutely does he embarrasses her and torments her for example uh, and it's it's crude it's quite crude uh, one time he drags her down the hall and goes into this storage closet and kisses her she doesn't want this and then she's confused like why is he doing this he hates me he has turned the whole school against me which he does and then he comes out and or she comes out rushes out of the room and the whole door is surrounded by all these jocks and stuff and he comes out yeah the carpets match the drapes like she's redhead and stuff and they all laugh and he holds up a pair of underwear and just mortifying mortifying this guy I just couldn't believe it couldn't believe it fast forward a bit the first like two chapters of are when they're in grade 10 grade 11 it goes by pretty quick but the whole time he's just horrible to her like not acceptable behavior at all in that time she has something tragic happen she it happens right away pretty much her father is murdered her father is murdered it happens like in the first chapter so um, she's never really had a good relationship with her mom her mom's kind of a drunk and a lush and is only was seemed to be only with her father she just she's one of those people that just wants to be taken care of and live high on the hog and not do a lick of work right she's just so she, her Aspen and her mom aren't close in the sense that she's not a nurturing mother at all and when her father is out of the picture who she didn't have the greatest relationship with her father but her father actually seemed to care about her. And the reason why he could send her to this private school is because he was a con man and he was murdered for it, which, you know, you live the life, that's what happens. However, Aspen didn't know this. She didn't know this. You find this all out right at the get. Yeah. And at her father's wake, or like funeral, she has to step outside and take a breather because she just her mom's in there flirting with the police officer investigating like she's hanging off this 
this well he's an FBI agent actually uh, and she's just embarrassed like I had nobody nobody left who even cares about me at all so she steps out and she's having a breakdown and who was out in this back alley that son of a gun knocks and of course she's like well, what are you doing here and he says something to the likes I just wanted to see I figured you'd be hurt and I wanted to see it something like just just mean just mean the Carter Mahoney that was in untouchable he was a crazy person but this Knox guy he really is off his rocker he is really off his rocker this is this is twisted like he's twisted but the, those are the things that I like to read these days So fast forward a little bit. Aspen is still going to the school. But I guess who her mom shacks up with and gets married to just a few months down the road. This FBI guy who was the father of Knox. So Aspen and her mom move in with Knox and his father. All right, it sounds stereotypical, like in a bully stepbrother romance thing. Yeah, things aren't quite as vanilla or straightforward as that sounds, really. She can't depend on her mother. She doesn't like this FBI agent, gives her the heebie-jeebies, and she's terrified and hates Knox. Hates, hates Knox. And apparently he hates her right back. So the tension in this book, it's not like the, oh, I hate you, but I kind of like you. I think you're beautiful, but I can't tell you. No, this is even darker than that. It really is. It really is. So I appreciate that in the sense I haven't read a book like this before. But then it goes even a step further into Aspen's mind. She can't depend on her mother. She's in grade 12 now. She's trying to get good grades because she's not going to be able to afford to go to a university. And she doesn't want people to pay for her because she feels like if this, her new stepdaddy, who's trying to buy her off, he wants to buy her a car and things like that, and she doesn't want to. Violet, get out of the flowers, please. You don't need to tiptoe through the tulips, Tiny Tim. She has this part-time job. And she always tells them that she's going to study with Violet, actually. Oh, Violet. This part-time job that nobody knows about. And I don't understand how the heck she could do it, but she works at the Bashful, Bashful Beaver which is a scuzzy strip joint and she's working here to make mad money if she can make it and she has about seven thousand dollars saved because she can't wait until she's done high school because she's blowing this popsicle stand honestly and she's gonna just drop it and drop it like it's hot and go now Knox he's a wild card he's not a jock he's not like a popular guy in the sense that he's a prep or anything like that he's a crazy person in the high school and people are scared of him he's beautiful he's dark and dangerous and people don't want to tangle with him rightfully so because he's a sick son of a gun now that's just talking about those those guys the bigger picture here in this town that they live, murders start happening. So, one of the murders are a co-worker of Aspen. But, of course, Aspen is freaking out about this, but can't tell anybody she's freaking out about this because she doesn't want anybody to know that she works at this bashful beaver. Knox continues to torment her and 
he eventually does, well, he knows right off the get where she, what she's doing when she's studying with Violet. And he kind of holds that in her back pocket. And there's other murders that go on. And it leans towards, Knox, this crazy son of a gun, is this psychopath murderer. And I think that he is a psychopath. And because all these murders are kind of connected back to Aspen and Knox. And at one point in this story, Aspen is violated a certain way, not by Knox. And although she's humiliated via Knox in the high school, something happens with somebody else and it goes viral, you know, on a video. And she has no control over it because somebody duped her and like it's the stuff that would terrible to say when people are so young and fragile as teenagers would feel like offing themselves because it would be so traumatic it's horrible it's horrible and Knox doesn't try to comfort comfort her per se. He finds her passed out on the road in front of their house during a rainstorm and brings her in to his room, which has never happened before, and realizes what's happened. And his retribution to these people that wronged Aspen. He doesn't go to tell her that he's doing anything, but holy cow, it just knocked me sideways. It really did. Like, it really did. I'm just like, one in particular, one character in particular that you think is a nice guy is not so much a nice guy and Knox certainly takes him out of the picture. And it's not like he is killed or anything like that, but he pretty much ruins him. And it's just right there on the page. And I'm just like, oh my God, what the hell is going on here? Violet, what is going on? So fast forward a little bit. I know I'm talking so much about those guys. There is a bigger picture, a bigger story to this. These murders that are going on in the community, they're not happening all at once. And Aspen's father, who was killed, his best friend, whose name is Leo, is brothers with her new stepdaddy, if you can follow me. So, Leo was best friends with Aspen's father, and Leo is the brother of the FBI person that the mother is currently married to. Throw in a bit more spice, and Aspen and Leo are connected in their own way, and that's all I'll say about that, which is not healthy at all. And again, another, there's layers of secrets in this book that totally throws me for a loop. I do have to say, I, I do like the ending. It's pretty brutal. And it's sick and twisted. It really reminded me of Mickey and Mallory Knox or what was that movie? California? I don't know. It, there's a tragic end, but a tragically happy end and it really put me through the ringer in the sense that okay <sighs> dingbat here is totally loathing Aspen in the beginning and they pretty much hate each other throughout the whole book but they have this chemistry together so they you know there's a little bit of stuff that goes on it's not a healthy relationship at all, but these two come together through such a tragedy 
through such abuse and moronic circumstances. This book, I would say, have certainly has would have trigger warnings. It doesn't say at the beginning of this. Um, so you follow this murder, murder thing along. You find out some things, and you wonder what the heck's going to happen. I am ticked off. I don't know why she she doesn't completely forgive him in regards to some of the things he does. But I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just that's kind of a stubborn person. I'd be like, drop kick ya if you get that close to me. But that's me. Just a minute. Maze is coming. <coughs> Anyways, I liked that there was more of a story. He has kind of a backstory. Well, not kind of. He certainly has a backstory. His relationship with his father... He's one of those fathers that demands you call him sir. And God forbid you step out of line, even if it's the simplest little thing. And yeah. So this book, the trigger warnings would absolutely be tormenting if that's a trigger warning. Unfortunately, and the biggest one that's sticking out to me because it's just the way I am. There's death of an animal. There's consensual things or non-consensual things happening. There's murder. There's... What else is there? I don't know all the different kind of trigger warnings there are, but... Abuse. Abuse. Child abuse. Um physical and mental abuse like I have to say I liked the story and you kind of find out why he was such an a-hole an effing a-hole in the beginning at the very end but still I'm just like do you have not you don't have that kind of control over your mind that you can't simmer down now like simmer down now I just can't imagine putting that much energy forward to make somebody else's life miserable. I don't have that in me. I'm just like, I'm more of a like, cut you off and that's it. Not that I hate a person, but I'm just done with you. Like, so I did enjoy this in a sense that I got some satisfaction out of ending it and the way it ended. It ticked me off um, just how they hated each other right off the bat without us knowing why. And, but you, like I say, you do kind of find that out. I still think it's, it doesn't justify, but that's me. Um, yeah, death of a parent is, well, parents in this and just I would recommend it if you are into dark twisted stories this is a dark twisted story there is some sexy steamy parts in this but they're dark and twisted and yeah this this is darker than those other bully romances that I read I think I think. Those other bully romances, there's no murder. There's no real abuse. There's a little bit, but not like the abuse and stuff that's in this. This is not even a young adult. Certainly not a youth book. Not a young adult. This is like, even though it has to do with people in grade 12 just graduating, I don't generally like that age range of characters. But I like that it involved more than just those two. Those two were the main people, but other people were involved. And you get to know other people, and the other people are adults. And they're... They're all twisted Fs. They are. But 
yeah, this is the first book I've read of this. That's not a very good <laughs> review. I just wanted to talk about it. That's all. I just wanted to talk about it. Not so much that I'm giving it how many stars. It kept me engaged. It certainly did. And the writing style was really good. Like I, I didn't have to reread a paragraph because I didn't get it. Um, but I'm just like, this is not one of those fluffy happy endings, even dangerous fluffy happy endings. This is a Mickey and Mallory kind of ending, which I love that movie, by the way, Natural Born Killer is one of my favorites. Um, that's what this is. And yeah, I have to say he's quite attractive though. Knox, he's like an underground fighter. He He's muscly, he has his head shaved short like this. Aspen, has long, wild red hair and some freckles. And, um, yeah, they're quite the interesting couple. Yeah, so I would recommend it only if you're into dark, twisted romances. Um, but I think the people in here are dark and twisted because of their history, the way that they, they were abused which goes from generation to generation and it's disturbing kind of so anyways i'm gonna end this now violet is just uh, there she is hi violet hi violet Ooh, styling and profiling yes but i'm gonna end this now and uh Ooh, I'm sweating. Um, I'll get this edited in and maybe uploaded today. If not, I'll get it uploaded tomorrow. But thanks for hanging out with me today and listen to me talk about this book. I just want to talk about books that I finish immediately. I have books that I've read over the past month that I want to try to use those as catch-up days because I've I've read quite a quite a lot and. Um, yeah, with one like this and that other one I read, what was it, The Bet, I wanted to talk about it while the fire's in my belly about it. And I like this better than The Bet. And I think I like this better than Untouchable and that other bully one I read. But I like those two. But this, I like this because it got me so weirded out, like crazy, crazy. Messed up, jacked up, wanked out kind of stuff. But... I would certainly read another book of Ashley's because I'd like to see if this is just a one-off or if she, I don't even know what other books she read. I just seen this one, Hate Me, a uh, stepbrother romance, and I bought it and just on a whim. And yeah, that's my two cents about it. So anyways, I'm going to say peace, love, and happiness today and every single day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you so choose. But if not, that's okay too. I still love you. I still want all the happiness in the world for each and every one of you out there. I certainly do. I really, really, honest and truly do. Yes, I do. So, all right, guys. Well, with that, I guess I'm going to say have a good night or have a good morning. And I might see you tomorrow. Bye. Bloop.